Today Ginny we're talking Fuch. about Ginny Fuchs. Ginny Fuchs. That's not what I've always called her. I always called her Ginny Fuchs. Anyway, Fuchs. it's Fuchs, though. Fuchs. The sir. Hey guys, it's your best five friends. I'm Kelsey. That's Rachel. Rachel, what a crazy story that we learned of today. Let's talk about Jenny Fuchs. Rachel, she's from Houston. Actually, yes. she's from Kima. She uh, trained. She's long. I've followed her career for she's a long time. Kima. She is. She's from Kima. <laughs> if you don't know, Kima is a boardwalk like outside of Houston, and they have like a little it's like, fancy and nice carnival there. fair thing. Yeah. But it's tiny. Never, I've never met heard anybody of from anybody there. Anybody being from Kima. But man, she came oh 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 so close to making the Olympic team in 2012. Then again in 2016 and didn't make it. And I, I followed her story because we, we live in this area and we cheer for her, obviously. And she was going to quit and turn professional, quit being an amateur, turn professional. But then she changed her mind. She said, I'm going to try one more time. One more time. Think how many years that is trying to make 2012, tried to make... 2016. Finally, she is a favorite to be on the Olympic team and at Flyweight, Women's Flyweight Division. Can we just say... That with the whole pandemic thing, yeah. I'm sure all Olympic hopefuls for 2020 were kind of like, say what? You yeah, it was I mean? a big like, deal. They that was to, a big thing. You yeah. don't know what's really going to happen. But, you know, been rescheduled. And then Man, what happens? What happens she gets to poor popped Jenny? by USADA on a drug test for some... Uh, Two banned sub substances. Banned substances, okay? And so imagine being her, because she was like, I didn't take these banned substances. Just what, like, I didn't, yeah. What just happened? What happened to all these? Yeah, I can't imagine. I feel like my heart goes out to her. Like, really crazy situation. Um, and then to find out that, oh, I ingested these, for lack of a better term, through sexual activity. I had sex with somebody who was, was taking... She was dating somebody. She, her boyfriend, <laughs> unknown to her, but, like, he had... Purchased or taken some, some kind substances. of, you know, people get supplements. Yeah, the like oh, it happens. There's no details on that except that her boyfriend had ingested it. They then were having sex, so she had traces of two banned substances in her system due to sexual injury. And that, first of all, crazy that you saw it could catch that. Second, right. more amazingly, is that they could determine that that was. This case. And so that's and, what, like, was... And that she would still be, she's still eligible for the Olympic team that happens in 2021. She still has, she has one more step to make to qualify, like all of them do, but she's a favorite to do that, and she doesn't, ha she didn't lose her opportunity because of this crazy situation. So yeah, it is crazy that they're able to, whatever the investigation that went on, that they were able to find out. They said it was, I think, I'll put a link to the article in show notes, but they said it was that it was consistent with uh, the levels of this banned substance were consistent with, uh, I guess, other testing, other things with uh, sexual transmission. That, like, so it's what it kind of science crazy. do we have that we can we can hone in on that? And then there was a statement from Usada. I forget the guy's name, Jeff Novitsky, I think is his name. But he said basically this, which so I it's agree with. the World Anti-Doping Agency. And that's what everybody uses as their for standard the Olympics. process. And so their job as an organization is to help standardize the anti-doping, you know, regulations and rules. Yeah, so she gets popped for this by USADA. She goes to the thing. They determine what it is. It's not, didn't enhance her performance. She didn't, they, she's at yeah, no fault. She moved. gets to move on. So why does everybody know about this crazy thing? Like it has to be reported and there was a phrase used called like a, like non-violation. It was some kind of phrase that they use, mm -hmm. but it has to be reported and it's publicly yeah. like So then everybody known. has to make statements and this wild story. I mean, it's not wild. It's just a crazy, it's well, it seems like, thought, like an invasion of privacy yeah. to have um, something, this something put out there it. that doesn't keep you from participating in the Olympics. Oh, but by the way, we got to tell everybody I know, that you, I saw. you got like, you know, this banned substance in your system through having sex. <laughs> and I just happened to run across it today, a day that I didn't really plan on writing, but I was like, well, I have to write this story because it's so, I'm, it's such a, a interesting oddity, I think. And then also happened to be about somebody that whose career I follow with for the last 12 years. Interesting to me is one could say, oh, well, you know, at least like the benefit of this story being public is that other people, other Olympic hopefuls can be aware of this. But here's my question. Like, do they need to be aware so they don't get popped for this? They don't. 
Because I don't think it should be public. So, like, why do you need to be aware of, like, this completely innocent... It wasn't performance enhancing, and it was trace amounts, like... Yeah. And they determined it was, you know, it's likely a, via, like, sexual transmission. And then probably she well, provided then, added then data like, of, like, her boyfriend knew what he had The other part about it, let's just take the sex part out of it. Let's just think everything else is still true. Well... She's still, they've, the people that are determining this have determined that uh, all the things that make it, like, where she can still compete in the Olympics, making it all public knowledge just gives people out there who don't already need ammo to fire at, at online people um, that, do, do you see what I'm saying? Like, like yeah, people well, would just make question. up stories about her and say, oh, she must have cheated. Well, we don't, you know what I mean, without any real information that suggests that. Yeah. My question was, uh, like, somebody might say that there is a benefit to that, and she might have said that herself. I'm just wondering if there is an actual benefit, because I feel like it's a non, like, it's a non, it should be a non-starter. It's, there's nothing illegal going on here. Why are we making it public? I mean, you might as well, like, come into my bedroom then and be like, oh, like, this person took, you know, like, like, what else are you going to make public that has nothing to do with why I'm here? That's what I mean. Like... I just, I don't so understand, thing. like, why this would be public. So the, the guy that you quote in your article, like, questioning, why is the World Anti-Doping Agency, these rules and regulations need to be changed. People shouldn't, this shouldn't have to be publicly reported. So I think is maybe, maybe this will be like a weird little footnote in her overall story of resilience, which she had to, she's definitely been resilient. Yeah. Trying yeah. to make the Olympic team. It's, hopefully she does make the. I don't say openly. I hope she makes it. She's from where I'm from. I hope she makes the Olympic team. And goes on, um, and I also know that this. She has been raising awareness for. She's got OCD, so she's a type of person that has to wash her hands and do mm -hmm. that kind of repetitive stuff all the time. So who knows? When people start knowing somebody's name for whatever reason, that does give them a bigger platform. Maybe right. that will help her in that quest, as will her Olympic or eventual Olympic birth. Here coming up next year. On the other extreme of things, is it possible to uh, like get your performance enhancing drugs like through sexual activity? Well, could this Did you, be I a mean, new way? I've heard of drugs being administered that way. Through sexual activity? Well, through certain parts of the body. <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, this is it. It's the same thing, right? If somebody oh, you're prescribed saying, you a drug that you put you're in. You're saying if. Put if something this. is, let's say, ejaculated into you, that... But the same thing as if someone gave you a... If somebody administered a drug into you. Yeah, or there's yes. people that take drugs in their butt. <laughs> I forget what it's called, but they do. All right. We, we've gone too far. I'm just saying, it's just something that happens. Here's the thing. We're, we support Jenny Fuchs. Yeah. Fuchs. Go, Jenny. Go to the Olympics and, and win the gold medal. We'd you love, know, love nothing small, more to see that. small hurdle here, but you've cleared it. And hopefully there's nothing else in your way. Also, it's Jenny Fuchs. Sorry. See, I was like, am I We're saying trying. it the right way? And then I said it the wrong way. Virginia Fuchs. Yeah, but all But when I say Jenny. Virginia, I'm like, hello, Virginia. <laughs> I'm from Virginia. I'm from West Virginia. We should name, if we ever have a daughter, we name her in West Virginia. West Virginia. West Jenny, baby. <laughs> That'll be her nickname. <sighs> all right. Well, thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. You want to say it in your accent, in your foghorn, wakehorn accent? Well, I do declare. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs>